Hi everyone, I am Dr. Gautami, MDS in Orthodontics and today we are here to learn about the topic removable appliances. So I am very sure all of you during your UG days, you, know, you guys would have done your Adams class when basic wire bendings in which you would have dealt with most of the removable appliances. So today in this topic, we are going to learn what are the removable appliances. We are going to solve some of the questions which usually occur in the exams in related to this topic. So the term removable appliance is used to indicate an appliance which is intended to be worn and removed by the patients at will. So which of the following is true about the removable appliances? A. The tooth movement like tipping, overbite, reduction can be undertaken. Option B, as force employed is less, the strain on the anchor teeth is more in the fixed appliance. And option C, where the removable appliance need more inventory for fabrication. And option D, removable appliance brings about bodily movement. Definitely option D is not the correct option, whereas the removable appliance needs more inventory for fabrication, definitely no. And as the force employed is less, so there is a strain on the anchor teeth as more in fixed appliance. Definitely, there is no force on the anchor teeth in a removable appliance. So, the best option here would be option A where tooth movement like tipping, overbite reduction and can be undertaken. So, this is what about removable appliance. Advantages of removable appliances. The most malocclusions require tipping movement and there can be readily brought about by a removable appliance. Many movements like tipping, overbite reduction can be undertaken. They bring about tipping movement requiring less force, hence the strain on the anchor teeth is lesser. The fabrication requires is very less inventory and is less expensive than the fixed appliances. So there are many you know, adjuncts also in removable appliance. It's not just about a Hollies appliance where you have a labial bone and acrylic plate, but also you have different screws, springs and clasps which can be incorporated into the appliance in order to bring about the desired tooth movement. So there are two, three types of um, screws, three types of screws that is dental expansion to widen the arch, to move in buckle direction one or small group of teeth, Schwartz appliance, distal or mesial direction. So coming to the components are, these are the acrylic base plate, the clasps, the labial arches and springs and screws etc. Coming to the classification, they can be either attached, loose, active or passive. According to the attached that is with the clasp, there is a Hollage appliance and without clasp that is an activator and Frankel appliance. It exerts force to move teeth, example with screws and with springs etc. Passive is for retention that is the Hollies plate. So here are some of the pictures which shows the different removable appliances like your Hollies with an expansion screw and this is a bionator. And here is another uh, Hollies appliance with an expansion screw and this is a Frankel. So when you compare and contrast both the active and the passive appliances, in compared to the extra oral traction, the devices used are face mask, headgear and chin cups. And in your passive appliances, you have your bite planes, your occlusal splint, space maintainers, retainers like Holly's plate and functional appliances like Frankel and activator. Now, in the exam, they generally ask questions like which of these appliances or which of these are passive or which of these are active. Now, how do you know which is an active and which is a passive? Let us take an example of something like your um, lip bumpers and let us compare it with your bite planes. So in bite planes, we usually want to only correct the cross bite. So the, basically the presence of that appliance not bringing about a direct tooth movement or a direct treatment change are the passive. That means indirectly the presence of that appliance is just 
you know, keeping hold of structures there. That means they are passive. But whereas when you find an active treatment actually going around, that is when you find an active appliance, something like your face mask, something like a chin cup, headgear, you find an active tooth movement or an active actual uh, treatment change happening. But whereas if you take space maintainers, for example, in space maintainers, you extract a pedodontic tooth and you give a space maintainer. So what is happening here? Are you getting anything active? No, it is just that they are present there and they're preventing something to happen. But whereas in your space regaining, you are trying to gain space out of that. So this is called as one of the space regaining or the space gaining procedures. So the next question is, what is the amount of force needed by a spring for most of the tooth movement? We have different options. Well, this is a direct straightaway question. The optimum amount of force needed for a spring for the most of the tooth movement is 20 grams per centimeter square. Advantages of removable appliances. Less chair side time, easy to perform for simple malocclusions, less expensive, it can be removed by the patient for brushing and applying the and appliance maintenance, easy to maintain oral hygiene, less conspicuous than fixed appliances, if damaged can be removed by the patient and less tissue damage. Coming to the limitations, they are complicated and multiple tooth movements are also impossible. And skeletal malocclusions cannot be treated, mesial migration of posteriors after aligning, anterior teeth to close the space is not possible, patient's cooperation is of utmost requirement. Retentive components, three-fourth or C-clasp or a full clasp or a Jackson's clasp, triangular clasp, Adam's clasp and its modification. So here are a few Retentive components that is basically your clasps which act as a retentive feature in a active removable appliance. So here are the pictures of different types of clasps. This is a ball and clasp, this is a triangular clasp, this is a Jackson's clasp and this is your Adam's clasp. This is an anterior arrowhead Adam's clasp. So the next question is, in Adam's class, the angulation of the retentive points at a bridge portion should be A55, B45, C85 and D75. This is a hit and run again question. There is nothing to be explained. But here you have to remember that the retentive component, for example, imagine this is the bridge of your Adam's class. It somehow falls like this, right? So this angulation is what he is asking. So this angulation should be 45 degree. So the answer for this is D 45 degree.